Hi folks, I just wanted to uh, do another quick video um, to redo the wallet uh, from last night. Didn't want to put two videos on, I didn't want to confuse uh, the situation, so I thought if I just redo it um, and then hopefully you can follow this video. Okay, so um, the pieces that you need, okay, you need um, a piece of... Um, I can hear somebody squealing. Um, you need your piece of interfacing. Now, this is an iron-on interfacing. Um, you can sew this on, so if you haven't got any iron-on interfacing, that's fine. Um, you can feel underneath. It's 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 rougher on one side than the other side when you're working with iron-on interfacing. So that is the glue side. So when you're attaching it to your fabric, you need to make sure that you get your... There's your right side of the fabric. That's the wrong side. And then you feel where the rough side is and then you place that down. So you're gluing the interface into the wrong side of the fabric. So let me just um, smooth that out a bit. If I just tell you what you need, because you can make um, you can make these out of scrap, which is really great. Um, you need um, a piece of fabric for the outer four and a half inches deep by uh, ten and a half inches wide. The same again for your lining fabric and the same again for your interfacing. Then you need uh, for your pockets on the inside, you need um, again ten and a half inches wide and you need this at a minimum twelve and a half inches long. If you want to go slightly longer and then you can trim, that's fine. Um, I'll talk about the pins in a minute. Um, you also need some Velcro, just normal standard sew, sew on sew Velcro um, and try and get, I've chosen the black one because I think that goes quite well with this fabric, um, but just try and get something that matches your fabric. Um, so again, the pleats, I'll go over the pleats when I'm, when I'm doing it. I did um, put this on the, this is the pattern I did with the peaks and the valleys. So basically we're just going to press that fabric to make the pockets um, and that's what the pins are for there so when I come to do that I'll just explain to you what I'm doing there so first of all I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna press this interface in now I always go from the middle outwards because you find sometimes that um, sometimes it bubbles up a little bit so to get a nice smooth finish, try your centre and then just come outwards. Um, you don't always need steam with this, just an all, a nice hot iron is fine. A couple of times. Now be careful when you're, um, if you can see that is slightly longer. And as I pull that off, it's sticking to the towel. Now if you're doing that on your ironing board, make sure you put a piece of scrap fabric down. This is just an old towel I use. Uh, when I'm doing, you know, pressing uh, rather than bringing the big iron out. So um, just make sure that you don't put that onto your iron because it'll stick onto your, sorry, your ironing board. It'll stick onto your iron and uh, said that again, it'll stick onto your ironing board. And then when you iron again, it will then stick onto your iron. So, uh, yeah, so just be careful. OK, so if I bring that over there now, I've pinned this. If I talk you through where I've put the pins. Um, on the little pattern I put on Facebook last night has got the measurements that you need. So the first pin needs to go two inches. Then the next one, an inch and a half from that pin. The next one, two inches. The next one, inch and a half. And the next one, two. So there are five pins all together. And then the same on this side. So then what that's going to do is help um, set where the, where the, um, the little pockets are going to be. Now, the best way I found doing this, this is probably the most complicated bit of the um, the little project. If you, where your pins are, the top one where there's about three inches or more, if you've cut more, if you just fold that underneath, I'm just going to check that straight at the back, fold that underneath and then just give it a little press, take your pins out. You press it in the middle first, you've pressed it in the crease and then you can take your pins out. Just give that another little press and move the machine out of the way a bit. 
and then the next one these pins you want to go upwards with this piece so if you fold it there find where your pins are can you see if i bring that no, it needs to come there doesn't it so find where your pins are try and be really precise with this if you can um because otherwise your um little pockets won't be straight press the middle again might take a bit of practice you might want to do this a couple of times before you get it right but don't don't worry it took me a few times to get it right so it is it's not tricky it's just a bit fiddly then the next one you're coming down so you can already see those pockets starting to form already so i'm just going to put that there like that again i'm going to press in the center now if you've got um glass headed pins you don't need to worry about pressing over the pins but um if they're plastic just be really careful so i'm quite happy with that now it's quite even then the next one goes back up again now i know you're upside down so if you can work it out um obviously it's going up away from me but it looks like it's coming down to you so when i say press it up it obviously when you're doing it is going up away from you and then the last one bring it down okay now you can see well whether you can see let me just show you So because I cut that slightly a bit longer because I'd rather have too much and trim it off than this not sit. If that was too high at the back, it would just look untidy from the inside. So you want this to all fit inside when you enclose it into this. You want it to all fit nicely. So there is a little bit there that needs trimming off. So just take your scissors and trim off from the underneath. It should be too big underneath if you've done it 12 and a half or more i did that about just over 12 and a half actually okay so i'm going to put the eye in there just move that there out of the way okay yeah that's fine i'm happy with that okay we'll need the iron back again in a minute um i'll just put it there for now okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check where the first cards need to go. Now, bear in mind, this is going to get sewn onto this. So we need to make sure that we leave it at least we're going to do a um, quarter of an inch seam. So we're going to need to leave at least a quarter of an inch seam there. So I'm just going to move that over slightly, just ever so slightly. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a pin here and then all we're going to do I'm going to move that out of the way is we're going to just stitch a line across here so what will happen there is that saves your cards moving over it also forms the first crease when we want to fold the wallet over okay so I'm just going to just back tack it there sew down and you can back tack it there if you if you forget don't worry but um ideally do give it a back tack top and bottom so um i'm going to because i'll, I'll show you because i put that pin in vertically i need to really now take that pin out to be able to sew it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a pin where it's gone in this point going down where it's gone in so i know that's the right point because that's the entry point then i'm going to take that pin out and then i'm going to turn that pin horizontally so i know now that's my line there so i'm aiming towards where i've gone in and if you want to just check that again there's plenty of room there okay so just uh, just an idea because you'll get that to get you will put that under the machine and you think well i can't sew it because the pin's in the way so just change your position of your pin okay pop that in there now you've got uh, quite a lot of thicknesses here so um just take it easy um maybe put your machine on a slow stitch now i'm going to do this in red so it's uh, contrasting not contrasting so it's the same as uh, the fabric i'm using 
I'm just going to work with uh, black and red cotton tonight. Move that out of the way. So yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to attach my Velcro to this side. Now, I'm going to put the hard bit on because um, this softer bit is, I think, is easier to sew on. So when we put that on later, we're going to have quite a lot of thicknesses to do. So I'm going to put the harder one here. Now, I just cut this off the roll today, so I'm just going to straighten that up. And you actually want to place that um, about just a bit more than your uh, quarter of an inch seam here and there as well. So you want to just make sure that that is short enough that you can sew round it, but you don't want to, um, you don't want to do it too short. Okay. So just pin that, pin that onto it. It's a bit tricky to pin. It's quite thick. Just move that over slightly. Good pins are invaluable. Um, if you can get, you know, sometimes I always say, you know, when it comes to sewing, use what you've got. Um, don't don't spend too much money, but there are things that you need to invest in. Good scissors, good unpickers, good pins. So those are the um, the things you do need to invest in. Now I'm going to change my cotton to a black cotton because I want that to kind of blend in. I don't want it to be bright red. So bear with me a second while I just quickly change the cotton. Pop that back on there. Yeah, again, if I mean, you can use a, the contrasting red if you're using red and black, but it just little things like this just make it look a little bit more. When I say less homemade, I don't mean to be disrespectful there because I'm not, because homemade stuff is lovely, but just more of a professional finish, especially if you're doing this for a gift or if you're making these to sell. Just those little tips. Um, I'm just going to trim that down a tiny, tiny bit more. Yeah, it just gives it that nicer finish. So if you've got the time, try and make the time. So I'm going to just going to sew around that. Um, and I'm going to back tack here and go all the way round and come back on itself and then back tack again. So you'll hear it as it's sewing because it's quite thick. It's not too bad actually because it's going only going through one thickness of fabric and then it's going through the, um, the interfacing as well. So that's not too bad. But, you know, if, if your machine is struggling, listen to your machine. Don't don't force it. Just take it out and start again. And I'm just going to give that a quick back tap there. Because obviously there's going to be a lot of pressure on this. Opening and closing, opening and closing. And you never know, if you know someone with lots of money, uh, the money might uh, force it open. So you want to make sure that that velcro isn't going anywhere. Okay, so... Now we just need this piece here. Where's my pack out tool? Oops. And then I just need to place. So your lining, if you've got a pattern on your lining, if you're using this, it needs to be right side up. So imagine that's your line in there. It needs to be the right side up, not the wrong side up. Just forget about that. Imagine this as your lining. So this is kind of um, same both sides, so it doesn't really matter. But just place that onto the bottom. Now, don't worry too much if it's too if it's slightly too long. Sometimes it's better to cut slightly too long than have it too short. Um, just check that when you fold that over, there is plenty. I like to have a little bit that we can trim down. So. You don't want to get to there and think when you've turned it over, there not be enough here to actually fit your other piece of Velcro on. So don't worry if it's slightly too big. It should be too big, actually. OK, I'm just going to get my pin. Now, the Velcro that we're going to sew on, the second piece of Velcro is going on this side. So this piece of Velcro needs to go on that side. So sandwich it all in and pin it. 
so it's not going to move. Make sure that you pin all of these pieces together. And by that I mean make sure that they're all level. So make sure that you've caught, you're going to catch in the lining, you're going to catch in the pockets and the top piece there. Okay, and all we're going to do is we're going to sew not the side that the Velcro is on because that needs to be all nicely finished there. We're going to start on this side, back tack here, all the way down to the bottom. Now you can see where that Velcro is, so that gives you a good guide actually. Um, and I'm going to leave my uh, black cotton on the top. I'm not going to change it to red because it's all inside, so it should be fine. We shouldn't have to worry about that. So back tack here, all the way down to this point, needle down, foot up, then turn it this way, needle down, uh, foot down and then carry on, do the same and up to the back here and then back tack this side here. So you're just going in a U shape really, but you're leaving the top open here. Okay, and a quarter inch seam again. Try and take, stick to a quarter inch seam on all of this project. And just take the pins out as you go. Now I've actually got my machine on the slow stitch. I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. But keep it nice and slow if you're comfortable with that. Because we're going through quite a lot of thicknesses. And when you get to the Velcro bit, just take your time. Go past the Velcro, get to your quarter of inch, and then carry on. So you're gonna be very close to that. You might actually be able to see that stitching. It's a couple of stitches away from that edge there. Up, needle up, sorry, ne needle down. Let me say that again. So foot up but the needle is down. So if you've got an old older machine where you have to, sometimes when you're sewing, the needle, the needle stays up, you need to just turn your um, wheel towards you to get your needle back in the down position. Because then you know your project won't move under the, um, under the machine when your foot is up. And as I say, make sure your back's half here. Go. So as I say, that doesn't really matter that it's black there because when we turn it through, you're not going to see it. So I'm just uh, you just want to try and avoid changing your cotton every five minutes because you'll soon get bored with that. So all I'm going to do now is turn it inside out. So when you turn it inside out, make sure that your pocket is next to the lining because if you do it this way, when you turn it inside out, it'll all get all scrunched up and it you're gonna get all of that bunched inside because you've sewn on the inside so make sure that your pockets are next to the lining and just take your thumbs and put them all the way down to the bottom just use those fingers to kind of push it push it up and it'll come up and then turn it through okay just going to use my knitting needle to poke that through. Just nice and gently. Okay. I'm going to turn that there. Yeah, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give that a little press just to make it nice and um, just a neater finish. Well, if you press as you go, it really helps. It helps it look professional and it just helps you as you're working as well. Let's cut that stitch off there. Oops. And what I'm going to do now, actually, as well, is I'm just going to turn, turn this over to where that stitch is, if I do it that way, actually, because that's going to be your first... And I'm just going to give that a press there because it'll just help it sit when all your money's in it and your pockets are in it. So just check that that is right there. Check that that's right. I'm going to check that the money goes in the back. That's fine. 
Okay, so I'm going to carry on to the next bit now. So uh, the other piece of Velcro is here. So what we need to do is when I turn that over, let me just pop that out of the way. Um, this, we need to sew this. So we're going to sew it that way. So when we fold it down like this, and then it comes over like this and closes like that. So it will just make it a lot easier to sew it on because again we've got all the thicknesses to go on here we're going to fold it over we don't want to be sewing over that too much so you do need to have this exactly excuse me two seconds somebody at the door just for the calls. right I'm back is that carrying on yes it is okay sorry about that there was somebody at the door okay so doesn't matter whether it's live or whether it's on a video something always happens okay so where was I where was I okay so I'm just going to trim this end off now okay so as I was saying this needs to be exactly the same here because we're going to close that raw edge into this bit here so I'm just gonna check that that's about right there I might trim that just a little bit so when we the thing with this bit now is to just check you need to put the velcro on when it's about halfway there so when I mean by halfway, so make sure that your the raw edge is being sandwiched in with the Velcro. Okay. So if I just pin that there, just for now, and then we can check. You can see how hard it is to pin that on. So when that's sewn, just don't worry about this. This is just temporary for now because I want to practice and just fold that over because what I'm going to do then is when we sew it this side, we're going to fold it over, sew it that side, and then obviously that then closes here onto the wallet. So I think that's it. I mean, you've got a tiny little gap here, but I think that will sit there quite nicely. So when you've, if you've done your, um, it was 10 and a half inches, wasn't it? So when you've done your 10 and a half inches and trimmed off the excess, and then trim just slightly a little bit more, it will be the right length. Just play with it until you're happy happy with it. Don't sew the Velcro on until you're absolutely happy with it. Okay, so all I'm going to do is halfway, if you can see there, I'm going to sew the Velcro onto the edge of this piece here. Now make sure you do back tack as well because this is going to take a lot of pressure when it's being opened and closed all the time. Okay, and just sew it to the top there and back tack again at the top. Go over it a couple of times if you're a bit worried. Um, and if you think your um, your machine is, is not sewing it properly, just stop, take it out and, and start again. So you can see the raw edge there now, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to fold this over. And I'm going to sew that down there. So if I put a pin in there. And you've cut you've closed your raw edge in there. Now there's no raw edges whatsoever. So again, just back tack here. So down and back tap there. It's a nice, simple little um, project, this. Um, now, I've got my black tape on the top, uh, my black um, cotton on the top, um, which is still fine. I've got my red underneath, which will be fine for the blue and the red underneath. It'll just give it a nice contrasting colour of cotton. And 
that is it. Okay, so fold that over, fold that over, and there is your wallet. Let me open it up. You've got your cards in there. These are just business cards, which are the same size as um, credit cards. Pop those ones in there and put your money in the back there. And then close it. Nice little wallet. So there you go. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, apologies about um, redoing a video, but it doesn't always happen. But I think um, I wanted to do it right from the start so you didn't get confused with the two videos. So hopefully that helped. OK, so um, I'll be back on next week. Um, if there's any questions about this or any questions about anything else, just give me a message and I'll do my best to uh, to help you through. But as I say, just take your time. A little bit thick, but not that bad. So take your time. OK, thanks. Bye.